All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a very special episode of Blade Bias. It is the beginning of 2024, so I thought I would shamelessly rip off a Will Hirsch Flips video and show you guys the state of my collection, which unfortunately is not as organized as Will's. This is actually my first time seeing all of this together, and I think this is a problem. I always told myself that I managed to fill up that case. I have a problem. Oh my gosh. Now, disclaimer, this is everything that I'm aware that I had. This is not things that have broken or maybe gone missing in the time since I've gotten them. So I'm probably missing one or two, maybe one. Actually, I know of one that got left at school, but it was like the curved CSGO one. So I'm not too, too worried about that one. Um, but let's just, let's let's do a 2023 recap because most of these ballad songs came in because this channel just went crazy in 2023 and a sort of reference point for what 2024 is going to look like. I hope I have the battery life, storage space, and uh, mental capacity to make this video. So let's see, I guess. Where should we start? I almost want to start with the goofy guys up here, with this whole area of sort of the misfits, I guess, but not, it, yeah, that's kind of a weird way to put it. But I think I'm going to start over here because these three specifically are the things that I've been flipping the most while I've been home. So, of course, they're the things that you're going to know the most about and you're going to know my full opinions on. We'll start off with the Prisma Pro, which I guess now that the Bally Awards voting has ended, I can say this without really... Uh, swaying too many people's votes but this is my ballast song of the year this is my absolute favorite thing that came out this year i love basically everything about the prisma pro it gets better and better every time i come back and flip it and it really really just it just fits my preferences so perfectly i love it so much it's it's nice and end weighted all the weight is focused at the end of the handles tip of the blade lot of momentum amazing amazing fans really comfortable rounded handles i just i love it i love it so much if i could change one thing about it though i would want it to be maybe a tiny bit heavier my time with this next ballast song has made me appreciate slightly heavier ballast songs a little bit more but prisma pro probably my favorite thing in my collection trainer wise this year another thing that i've been flipping very frequently lately and you guys have been seeing a lot of this one in the thumbnails lately the kraken trainer this thing has absolutely surprised me i have been shocked with how much i've been enjoying the kraken trainer now the kraken trainer v3 was a ballast song that i didn't really always like that much it was a ballast song that i said was very boring and i still stand by that there isn't much going on here but it is so consistent it doesn't have that crazy sparkle of personality that the Prisma Pro does, but what it does have is consistency and a lot of it. Whatever you want this ballast song to do, it will do it. And I have really appreciated having that around as I've been learning more and more tricks that go outside of my comfort zone. Specifically, the reverse cherry picker, which I did in the last video, which I now have basically not completely smooth, but I can do it relatively consistently. Uh, that was the wrong setup, but I can do it relatively consistently. So as I continue to branch out and learn new tricks, the Kraken Trainer's consistency has been incredible, and I've just really enjoyed flipping it. it this is basically what my preferences used to be. <clears throat> 4.2 ounces, slight handle bias, feels good in the hand, does everything that you want it to. This, in like mid 2022 would have went crazy for me and finally my favorite thing in my collection uh overall i have a few favorites the prisma pro is my favorite trainer this is my favorite overall ballast song the slift t v2 and while i don't flip live blades as much as i would like to the slift t really just does it all it is right in my preferences not perfectly normally i prefer a little less handle bias but for a live blade which, you know, I'm not flipping to the best of my abilities. <clears throat> I'm perfectly fine with that. I really, really like the Slift T. And 
it's just, it's an amazing workhorse. I love carrying this thing around, using it as an actual knife. It's a wonderful EDC, and it just flips so good, and it looks so good, and it's built so amazing. I've taken this thing apart multiple times, and it has tolerances just as good as the day I got it. The Slift T is definitely the most impressive Balasong in my collection, from build-wise, flipping-wise, all of that. I just, I love it so, so, so much. Now, let's move on to the case that you guys are probably going to be the most familiar with. My main case. This is filled with everything that I'm mostly flipping on a day-to-day -day basis, with the exception of a few of them because I had to move some things around. Uh, so let's start with my favorite looking Balasong and my favorite collectible in my collection, the Kraken Trainer. The Kraken Trainer. The Damascus Kraken. This thing, it's just like the Slift T, but it's not as perfect to me. It doesn't have that little bit of personality to it that makes me love the Slift T so much, but it's basically the Kraken Trainer Live Blade. I mean, obviously but in the sense that it's very consistent and it looks amazing. I couldn't bring myself to sell this thing even if I never flipped it, even if I never displayed it. I just love, 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 love that I own this thing. It flips amazing. It looks amazing. Damascus is probably my favorite thing that you can put on a knife. And it's just, it's so, so good. And actually, this is my first time flipping it in a little bit. Man, the Live Blade Kraken just is something special. Of course, we've got the whole white bread debate going on with Brandon and all that, but the Live Blade Kraken really is just... It's something special because it's so good. It's the standard. Everyone thinks the Kraken is good. Not everyone, but most people think the Kraken is good, and I think that's just so, so impressive. It's so consistent, and this specific one is so beautiful. This is probably my favorite collector's item in my collection. I just, man, I love it so much. <laughs> Next up, the Series V2. I traded this to Ty. Well, I mean, I didn't trade it. We sort of gave each other mutual birthday gifts that just both happened to be Bala songs. I gave him the Kraken Trainer 2.5 since he loved that thing so much. He gave me the Series V2 because I loved that thing so much. This thing is very, very good. I like the balance a lot. It feels very neutral. My biggest problem with it is that it doesn't carry a ton of momentum. I don't know how the Kraken Trainer has even less weight at the end of the handles here. You can see that there's this whole slab here. And yet it's still just, it's good. It's very good. I just find it missing a little bit of momentum in some tricks, which leads me to usually pick up some other things. But the, the Sirius V2 is very, very consistent. I really, really like it. I think it looks amazing. I do have the live blade for it, but I really prefer how the trainer looks and flips. And it just... There's just something special about it where it it kind of feels like the Kraken Trainer if it had a little bit of personality. It's a very consistent trainer with a tiny bit of personality, and I love it for that. In fact, I don't think I give this thing enough love, really. I really should be flipping this thing more. Next up, one of the most unique things in my collection, the Kuno. Basically, think of it as the swordfish, but titanium. And while that's doing a massive disservice to both how this thing flips and how it was designed, it is like-on-like -like construction with a very, very interesting blade. The Kuno, for a while, and actually to this day, is probably one of the most interesting flippers in my collection. It just doesn't flip like anything else due to its large size, its ability to carry momentum, and just the overall looks of it. It sounds amazing. It feels pretty good. I mean, I gotta say that I like the production Kuno a little bit more, but the prototype Kuno is still such a fun flipper to me that I just... I can't help but pick it up every once in a while because it just, like I said, it flips like nothing else in my collection. And for how, you know, wacky and wild it is, I find that I'm extremely consistent on it. In fact, I mean, I don't think I can, but I think I'd be able to land, can almost land a double scissor on that. And I haven't been able to do that the whole, basically the whole time I've been home. Granted, I haven't been trying very hard. I've been focused more on the giraffe, which I'll try to do here, but 
Ah, close enough, I guess. One more try? No. One more try because I'm stubborn? No. All right, we'll try that continuously. But the Kuno, amazing. I love it. It's such an interesting ballad song. And I believe production on these things is starting soon. I'm excited to hear people's opinions on them. Uh, Remchi did a great job on this thing. Love it a lot. Next up, my Nemesis. Kind of my Fall from Grace ballad song, because this thing used to be my absolute favorite thing in my collection. And while I still like it, it doesn't sing to me like it once did. It's kind of small. I mean, it's fairly normal, but like the rectangular handles aren't really doing a lot for me. There isn't a lot of place to grip onto. And while it does have a lot of momentum, it just doesn't feel very substantial. Now, I still like the Nemesis. I think the balance is incredibly interesting, how you can get this very handle biased Chaplin and rollover experience, yet still fan so good, uh, despite the fact that it doesn't really look like it has a lot of tip weight. I mean, it does look like it has a lot of end weight, but it's very good. I just think that the... The days of me thinking this is the best trainer in my collection are definitely over as I've transitioned into lighter, more, I don't know, more filled out trainers like the Prisma Pro. I mean, you can see Prisma Pro is much bigger, thicker. There's more going on here. The Nemesis is still good, but definitely far from, well, not far from, it's still up there. It's just not really my preferred balance or uh, weight distribution anymore. Uh, beautifully modded, though. Still holding up really good. The Anno and Acid Wash that Solaire gave it, really nice. And honestly, the reason that I haven't sold this thing yet is because the design... It's one of my favorite design trainers. This blade is so nice, and I just... I don't know why, but I have never felt the, this way about a trainer blade like this one. Except for one of those Static Knives uh, rep trainer blades that he made. Those things were really sick. But this trainer just, it's designed so nicely. The texturing, the blade, the whole pattern. I just, I love it. Um, and I do really think that the tolerances, because this thing, is, it's very loose. And loose ballast songs just don't feel the best to me. I know there's a lot of people out there who like loose ballast songs. I'm not one of those guys, so... You know, if it were a little tighter, maybe I would like it a little more. Definitely not at the bottom of my list by any means, but definitely not topping the list like it used to. I would say maybe a solid fifth or sixth place, although I don't know exactly where it would rank. The Prisma. Ty's... Dude, Ty used to love the Prisma. And you know what? I do love the Prisma. I think the balance on the Prisma is immaculate. There are a lot of people that think it's weird and they don't really like it and it takes a lot of getting used to, but I love the outer weighted kind of feeling of it. and It's just so good. But my biggest problem with the Prisma is the handles. The Prisma Pro has shown me just how much I don't really like blocky handles because the Prisma Pro is perfect in so many ways to me that when I pick up the Prisma, I'm like, man, I might like the balance of it a little bit better, but honestly, I would take the ergonomics of the Pro any single day. And I think that's why I love the Pro so much, is that the ergonomics just blow the Prisma V1 out of the water. Even if, in my book, I think it's a relatively close race in terms of balance. I really like how the Prisma flips. It's very neutral, maybe even with a hint of blade bias if you take out the weights, but it just... It just rips through tricks, and it's so light that you can manipulate it exactly how you want. There's so many things that you can do with it. I just, I, I do really like it. It sounds good. It looks good. And the tolerance is, I've never had to touch this thing. My biggest problem with this specific Prisma is that this comes from a time before MachineWise was chamfering their blades. So this blade, if you really rip on it and it gets you the wrong way, it can feel like it cut you, even though it didn't really break skin. It doesn't feel great, which really is the main reason I don't flip this that often. If this had a new blade that was chamfered like that, and I know I could sand it, and maybe I will, but this thing flips really, really well. I like it a lot. Next up, the Impusa. One of my most expensive ballast songs in my collection. 
and definitely one that I'm the most proud of. This thing looks incredible. This Kukri style blade is so distinctly Grant and Fellowship blades, and I just love it. But the flipping of it is also really, really good. As I'm trying to uh, transition position, as I'm trying to transition into a flipper who flips more slow and controlled, I find that the Impusa's balance is very, very good for that. The Impusa has always been a ballad song that demands a slower, more flowy flipping style. It doesn't really want to change up the way that it's going. It's still very light and fast, especially for what it is. This thing looks bulky. It looks aggressive. It looks like it's not going to do what you want it to do, but it really does. And I do enjoy how it flips, especially now that I'm moving to a bit of a different less jerky and fast flipping style. I mean, you can even see right now that I'm just flipping this thing slower just because, you know, that's what the balance of it really demands. Um, but the, the real standout of the Impusa for me is, one, the Anno, because it's one of the most vibrant Annos, especially in sunlight. Down here, it's not really showing, but you put this thing in, in sunlight and it just glows. But the standout is just how it looks and how it's built. I EDC this sometimes. I switch between it and my Slift T. It holds up great. feels great in the pocket because it's thin like the Nemesis. But I don't find it feeling small like the Nemesis does. So the Impusa, one of my favorites. Especially just, man, that Kukri blade. Oh my gosh. The Impusa blade. I know I'm throwing the word favorite a lot. This might be one of my favorite looking live blades. I'm probably forgetting of one that I just like absolutely love, but this is absolutely at the top of my list for live blade designs. It's just, it's so cool, man. Next up, the Glider Arctic. My Fire and Ice one to be specific, which nowadays is kind of my Beater Arctic, which back when I bought it was not supposed to be the plan. This was supposed to be my Safe Queen Arctic and the green one was supposed to be my Beater. But we'll get to why that change was made in a little bit. The Arctic feels very good. The Arctic in 2024, I don't think it holds up as well as it once did. I mean, granted, this is the Arctic V1. The Arctic 2 exists now, better grip and all that with the same or at least a very similar balance. But I still really like the Arctic. I know a lot of people hate on Glider for seemingly no reason. I'm not one of those people. I think it looks pretty cool even if this blade has been overdone to death in Glider's lineup. I think it flips really good, especially since I learned on a glider arctic. An arctic will always feel like home to me whenever I'm trying to learn a trick. Or whenever I'm doing a new trick. See, first try on that one. I've never done that in an arctic before. It just feels like home and it's so comfortable, not just because I learned on it, but because this thing for what it was back in the day was just immaculate. One of the most comfortable trainers out there because everything was beautifully rounded. These handles, they didn't flex at all. They feel like a solid slab of aluminum. The blade spine, one of the comfiest that I've encountered even to this day. And you combine that with the fact that everything else is beautifully rounded. It's just amazing. I love it so much. The Arctic will always have a special place in my heart even if I think it's starting to maybe get outpaced in 2024 with things like the Orion and the Vault Pro coming out and definitely replacing its position in the market. But I'll always have a soft spot for it. I love my Arctics. And it just, it looks really nice. Glider's Anos have always been very nice. Oh, and these, these spacers are custom. You can take out the, well, they're not custom, but I can customize them. I can take out the little rods and change the balance and it's really cool. Granted, even without the spacers, the Arctic will still be handle bias because it's got this short stubby blade, but you can customize the level of handle bias, which is always a cool thing. Next up, the Orion with the custom spacers from Warwack. I really like this thing. I carry this thing around with me every single day. If you go back and you watch my old collection video, I mention that I want a good balanced comb blade from a reputable maker. And we got that. LDY delivered amazingly. For a while, this thing was my favorite trainer. I love flipping it. To this day, it flips amazing. Even if the comfort from the... I wouldn't say lackluster, but, you know, there's some sharp angles on the Orion handles. It's not the most comfortable ballast song in the world. But it just... 
The fact that I have a comb that I can flip with me every single day, yes, I use it as a comb. Yes, it works. It's crazy. I couldn't believe it either. But it just feels so good to flip, especially now that I have these custom spacers on it, which lower the amount of weight that's focused at the end of these handles quite a bit. I like how this flips quite a bit. It is my beater. I actually torched this blade because it was a... It was a scrap blade, essentially, because it was bent and it hit the side of the channel. And I think to this day, it's it's not holding up the best, but I'm beating it. Still looks pretty good, besides the anno on the end. And it's just, a, it's just super fun. I hope LDY ends up bringing out a comb blade for the Orion 1.5. Because if they can balance it similar to the actual 1.5, probably be my new favorite trainer, I'm not going to lie. But this, this Balasong, I said it in the video and I'll say it again, absolute dream come true. I love it. Um, did I mention, I, I don't think I actually mentioned, the spacers lower the amount of weight at the end of the handles, make it a little more neutral. So it just fits my preferences a little bit more. Because I, I like having weight down here to carry momentum, but I don't like having too much, then it feels too heavy in the handles. Next up. The new Glider Arctic, but the old blade. So this blade is from my original green Glider Arctic. But Glider hit me up, and they sent me new green scales after they discontinued it. This very well might be one of the last sets of, like, new green out there. So it's just, it's really cool to have it. And that's why my Fire and Ice one kind of became my beater. Because these things, I could never even imagine flipping over concrete. The green from Glider is so unique and I like it so much I couldn't even imagine beating these things so I paid some respect to my original first ever you know the green glider arctic was my first ever metal trainer so I took the blade off of my old one and put it on these new scales same hardware and all that so gave it a little bit of a fresh makeover especially since those old scales were starting to dent so hard that they were losing tolerances and we will get to that where that old where those old scales are later because I've wanted to make a video on it for quite a while now but it almost feels wrong <laughs> well well you'll see what I mean eventually but the green there super unique I love it the only thing that comes close to it is like I guess NRB's green now but even then there's just something about the lime green from glider that I really like even though it was not my first choice when I bought it kind of became my favorite by proxy over the years that I've had it. And finally, for my main case, we have the Osprey. The Osprey is super sick. It reminds me of something like the Vulp, if the Vulp could actually chaplain. Which, you know, the, that's my biggest complaint for the Vulp. It's the thing that I like the least about the Vulp is that it can't chaplain. So you put that experience in a Balasong that looks as good as this does with these angled handles, which I love. I know that might be controversial. And this almost Prisma-like blade, even though this was designed well before the Prisma even existed. Um, it's just, it's super, super good. I really like it. There's a lot of tip weight. It fans really good. The handles feel light, but they don't feel too light. It still carries enough momentum for me to do the tricks that I want. Um, even though, like, in my head, when I pick this thing up, the handles do feel rather insubstantial. They don't feel great. Um, I mean, the machining is fine. It's just they feel very light. But, man, do I really like how this thing flips regardless. Like I said, it's like the Vulp. Because the Vulp has that same kind of light handle feel. We'll get into the Vulp later. But this thing can actually chaplain. And that is just awesome. Also, I think it's 7075 aluminum. I'm pretty sure it is. For a first design from the maker, oddly designed, I really like the Osprey. And I still flip it pretty regularly and it almost has that glider green i think this is more of a gold but you're, you're getting close there next up the plastic case now this is gonna be a very interesting case because it's gonna be half squiddies but we won't start with the actually no we will start with the squiddies let's get the og squiddy out of the way because i used to like the og squiddy but man do i not anymore it's fun to flip but, like, I would never choose this thing if I was going on vacation or something to be my only flipper. I just really don't like it. It's so handle biased that you can barely even fan it. Like, it fans, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't fan well. And choker fans... 
I mean, they're fine. It just feels so weird. It fights you at every step when you want to fan, which isn't great, but the squeedy is amazing for beginners because of that handle bias. So if you're doing something like a rollover, you know, it's going to glue itself to your finger and never want to leave, which for beginners is great, but for me, isn't. However, this particular squiddy will never leave my collection, nor will it leave my mind, because it's so cool. We got this custom Pokemon Pokeball. You can see Gyarados peeking through, and then when you pull it out, you got Gyarados there. I really like it. This was a cut. This was a gift from one of my friends for Christmas. Uh, I believe it was most of my friends. They pitched in in some way, and they made a custom squiddy painted and Pokeballed out, and it's just it's so cool. I don't really have it in my heart to actually flip it because I don't want it to break. I also don't want like the paint to come off or anything like that because I'm pretty sure the clear coating that was put on this is basically gone at this point. But it's still cool. It's so sick. And while the flipping experience of the original Squiddy might not be my favorite, I can't help but, you know, put this thing on display. It's just super cool. So actually, I'll keep that there so I remember that I actually covered it. Next up, we'll do the Cycloid V2. One of the most interesting ballast songs I have ever made a video on because of these spacers. The fact that I can just, you know, pop these spacers out. I think that's the more difficult one. I think this one's a little easier. Okay, my that really hurt. <laughs> take my word for it. Go watch the original Cycloid video. Um, you can take these spacers out without any tools put the little metal balls in there, change the balance however you want. You can take the balls out of the blade. It's such an interesting ballast song to experiment with how weight distribution and balance works and how you like them. Um, my only problem with it is that the handles feel like they weigh nothing because they don't. All of the weight is in these spacers and in the blade. So the cycloid v2.1 hd is i think its full name also called the douglas i believe is way better on that front because the handles weigh a little bit more so i prefer that vastly but the cycloid v2 is just such an interesting ballast song because you can customize it basically however you want granted you can't put any weights in here which i think would be super super special but just this ability to have these spacers and to pull it out without any tools. There we go. And then customize all these little discs and balls. It's just, I cannot get over how cool the engineering that went into the cycloid is. Um, I just really like it. Not my favorite flipping wise. Like I said, it's a little bit light. Um, but man, is it just such an interesting ballast song. Next up is one that I am, again, leave it out so I can actually know what I did. This is the Edit Light, and it's such an interesting ballast song to me because this is what got me interested in plastic in the first place. There was a period of time where I got into plastic, and I was known as, like, the plastic guy. And it was because of the Edit Light. I had no expectations for this thing when it came in. And then I flipped it and got so genuinely excited about it that I went on a plastic spree for months. And it's kind of the reason this collection is as big as it is. Although, well, no, yeah, kind of, because it inspired me to get the Cycloid V2 and then compare a bunch of plastic ballast songs. And then I made the plastic ballast song Buyer's Guide, which I think is one of the bigger videos on this channel. It's just... It's just so sick. I know a lot of people don't really like the edit series because the handles are big and it's kind of floaty and then the edit light has a kind of weird balance. But the edit light, if I could get a ballast song that flips like the edit light but in metal, I think it would very well become my favorite ballast song of all time. The balance on the edit light, I can't explain why I like it so much. I just know that I do. Fans are smooth. Rollovers are smooth. It feels neutral, even though I know in my head that it probably isn't. I just really, really like it. It's so good. It's so well distributed for a plastic ballast song. You can feel the weight all the way through the handles. It kind of reminds me of the Tay Flipper, which we'll get to in a little bit. But man, and the fact that you can customize it, obviously, is so, so cool. I really like the Edit Light. Don't flip it as much as I used to, admittedly, because I've been focusing more on metal lately. And I've just been getting more metal and talking about metal more. 
but my love for plastic ballast songs shines through every time I flip this thing. And it's older cousin, the Edit. Now the Edit lineup had some durability issues, which I guess I haven't really experienced because my Edit has been cracked in the handle here since I got it. Like basically like two days in, I think this happened or maybe a week or something. And ever since then, I have been flipping it over concrete, no issues. So besides like the slight sound that you get from the crack, because this isn't technically solid, so it changes the acoustics a tiny bit, this thing's been great. I regularly go back and forth between liking this and the edit light more. And I mean, how couldn't you? This blade is one of the coolest things I've seen in plastic. Like the fact that you can get the... Well, more specifically this side, I guess, because this is the carbon. I love the carbon. It's so nice. But the fact that you can get a, like, a black interior, but then the inside of it is actually, it's mint. So, like, I have this blade that's accented with the color of the handles. It's so cool. Probably my favorite looking plastic ballast song, specifically this mint one by a long shot, especially because you can just customize it. And now that these kind of dual tone blades, I believe are available to the public, it makes it just such a customizable option. And I highly recommend it. I mean, <clears throat> the, the ability to customize it this in depth is so cool to me. I love it so much. Uh, this was like my, it, it just feels so custom and personal and I just, I really like it. The edit lineup may not have the best track record durability wise but i think they flip excellently especially for plastic ballast songs the bars that go through the handles and the blade really do a lot to distribute the weight which is usually the biggest problem that i have with plastic ballast songs that the weight isn't that distributed so i really like what flip forge has done here um and i think i will for a long time i look forward to seeing what else he comes up with as well uh, this, I don't really have much to say about the Cycloid V1. It was good back when I reviewed it. It's still good now, but it's just so light and there's so much weight at the end of the handles. It's very handle biased, which isn't my preference anymore. I will say it's probably one of the most quality feeling ballast songs in terms of my plastic collection. Cause I mean, besides the Squiddy A, I guess, and the Squiddy lineup in general, but 3D printed wise, it just... There's something about the feel of the cycloid. It's very refined, which I don't know. I, I can't really describe it. It's like a textured plastic, so it feels just a little more premium than this more smooth plastic that Zippy now uses, which the plastic that Zippy now uses is much better. I know that, but the feel in the hand of the cycloid V1 is definitely a standout for me just because, you know, it's a... It feels a little bit more rough. It feels a little bit more more premium, even though this thing weighs like two ounces, maybe even less than that, 1.9 ounces. I don't remember off the top of my head. So the Cycloid V1, and this is the V1, not even the 1.5, which aimed to address the amount of weight in the end of the handles. Back when I reviewed it, really liked it because I liked handle bias at the time. Nowadays, I, I could take it or leave it, probably leave it. Next up, I guess I should put all of these back since we're done now and I need to flip over the case so I can get to the underneath of it. More specifically, the rest of the squid stuff and Tay's stuff. The Cal let's, let's do Tay in chronological order. The Tay Flipper remains to this day one of my favorite plastic ballast songs because it's much like the Edit Light, where it feels very distributed, it feels very good, it feels very neutral. The handles are a little bit bigger, but I think that adds to the fun factor and the floatiness of it. It just feels really, really good. And while it doesn't... to flip, I should say, because it doesn't feel the most premium, the... It's a very sharp ballast song. There's a lot of right angles. It doesn't feel very smoothed out, which Tay definitely fixed in his newer, um, his newer models. But the Tay Flipper, just the balance of it alone, is enough for me to say, yeah. They just they the be I don't know. It's so distributed. It's so nice. It's the reason I like the Edit Light, because the Edit Light feels very much like the Tay Flipper. Just a little heavier and a little more refined with its dimensions and and 3D printing and all of that. 
But this is such a solid start for one. I mean, Tay was one of the first 3D printed makers out there, along with like Zippy. And I can't really think of too many others at the time. Um, I know NDK Arts was in the scene as well. But for one of the first designs to be 3D printed that really proliferated into the market, I think the Tay Flipper is fantastic. And the Calico, I like a little bit less in terms of flipping, but it's so much more refined. It feels premium. It sounds premium. It is probably just one of the best plastic trainers full stop because you get the nice... Um, I mean, besides the site, I'd probably say the Cycloid HD is one of the best trainers if you can fix the fact that it doesn't chaplain very well. But for what you're getting in terms of flipping performance and quality and feel in the hand and all of that, I do think the Calico is one of the best. The weight is definitely more towards the end of the handles or end of the blade and end of the handles, which isn't as distributed as I liked, you know, I liked the Tay Flipper because it felt so distributed. This isn't as distributed, but I still think it flips fantastic, especially in the 1.5 model. This is a prototype. I honestly, going back to it, I'm not a huge fan with how this flips. I think there's too much kind of weirdness with the, dis the distribution, but Tay definitely fixed that for the Calico 1.5, which, like I said, probably in terms of things you could still buy today, one of the best plastic trainers out there. I prefer the Edit Light in terms of flipping, but what you lose in the Edit Light in terms of flipping, you gain in the Calico in terms of durability and overall just feel. Although, you know what? No, I, I would say that the Edit Light and the Calico, they feel about as premium as each other. But, oh, is that a crack at the pivot? Oh, it is. That's not great. Here I am talking about durability and there's a there's a crack forming in my pivot i don't know if i knew about that or maybe i i don't know but the calico just you get that little bit of durability back that um you might lose with flip forge and again i mean flip forge i haven't had any problems with but i've heard a lot of people having problems with that you don't really hear about that with tay tay just kind of kind of doing his own thing uh, making a really, really well flipping ballast song. This is unoiled. If I oiled it, it would probably feel even better. But the Calico, definitely probably one of the best all-around plastic trainers that you can get, in my opinion. But the plastic world is very, very close. Back in the day, I really, really preferred the Tay Flipper over the Cycloid. Nowadays, it's a tough, it's a tough decision between the Calico, the Edit, and the, the Cycloid HD. It's a really tough decision. Next up, we have my custom Squiddy U, which isn't as customized as my Squiddy OG was, but still cool nonetheless, and the reason that I own three of basically the same Squiddy. Um, it's a Squiddy B, but it's blue, you know? I don't like to flip it as much because I don't think this has a clear coat in the paint, so I don't want to scuff it up by flipping it too much but it's still really, really cool. I still really like it. You got the Marty side, you got the deck side, these cute little paintings of them. I love it. It's like my mascot, Balasong. Um, and it's my Squiddy B. I mean, it flips exactly the same as a Squiddy B. The Squiddy B was my first ever Balasong, so it's always going to feel pretty good to me, especially since this hasn't been beaten as much as my Squiddy B has, which we'll get to in a little bit. But it's a Squiddy B, but blue, and it's pretty cool especially since it was customized like that. Now, my first ever ballast song. I have been flipping the Squiddy B the past few days. I don't know how I feel about it because it feels really, really good to flip until you get to choker fans. This thing does not want to choker fan. I don't know if it's the square handles. I don't know if it's the momentum carrying of it. I genuinely don't know, but it doesn't want to choker fan. Otherwise, I think it feels great. Again, you're always going to feel a bit of a soft spot in your heart for the first ballast song that you ever had. And while the first metal trainer was the Arctic, and ultimately the Arctic is the thing that I flipped the most back then, I still had this for a solid three months where it was my only ballast song. So this thing is also incredibly comfortable when I come back to it. It makes learning things super, super sick. 
In fact, I've been using it to try and smooth out my giraffe since you don't have to worry about the bite or, or safe side. Because, you know, at the end of the day, if you're picking up the balisong, making sure that you're on the bite side so you can throw a giraffe takes time. And I don't have to do that with the Squiddy Bee. I can literally just giraffe and throw it again and giraffe and throw it again. And it, it feels a little more efficient in my head. But the Squiddy Bee, slightly handle biased, feels pretty good to me. Squid calls it neutral, I believe. I don't know if I would call it neutral, especially with the way that it doesn't want a choker fan. But if it feels good, definitely one of the more premium uh, Squiddy models. And a tough race. I, I mentioned earlier that it's a tough race between the 3D printed stuff. But this definitely puts up a big fight with the 3D printed stuff. Because it's, you know, it's not 3D printed. It's probably one of the most quality plastic balisongs. Um, maybe not the best balanced, but that depends on your preferences. I think it has one of the best balances. If you just talk about balance, I think it flips great. I'm actually really surprised I can flip this. Because this thing has taken so much of a beating has so much play. It has these faded titanium pivots that I bought because I thought they would look cool. Turned out to be a massive waste of money, but the actual pivots are like rusted out. The nose pins all silver. This is definitely the Balasong that's taken the most abuse in my collection. Maybe only second to the original Arctic, which we'll get to in a little bit. But Squiddy B holds a special place in my heart, even if I don't flip it that often. And the Squiddy A, I don't have much to say about it. It's slightly more neutral. It choker fan. I want to say it choker fans a little better. Mm, not really. It choker fans a tiny bit better, but I think that's because the Altem is a little more slippery, so it allows you to, you know, let the Balasong turn in your hands a little bit more. But the Squiddy A, slightly more neutral than the Squiddy B. Not by much. It's barely noticeable, but I can notice it. Designed very good and... The first review product that I, well, first and only currently, and probably for a long time in the future, review product that Squid ever sent me. So it's a pretty cool thing. Squid, to get an email from Squid saying, hey, do you want to review one of our things, was a very special moment in my Balasong career, I guess. So the Squiddy A is pretty cool. And, you know, it's the last review that I ever did in my main channel which I would like to change, but we'll see. We'll see. It's very tough. Like, back in the day, I used to think, like, oh, I have to catch up on reviewing everything in my collection. Nowadays, I think it would take me two years to make full reviews on everything in my collection. And that's even combining things, like all the Arctics, all the Orions, all the Prismas, all the Krakens. I, I think it would take me years to do that. But... Whatever. That's kind of why we're doing this video, huh? You get my thoughts on pretty much everything in my collection. I should leave that open so we can know where we've been. Next up, we're going to go to the land of the floating. Because, you know, I don't have enough case space. I need to get a new case so that I can actually properly store everything. I try to be as organized as possible. And so far it's working. But as I continue to get more balisongs... And companies continue to reach out being like, hey, do you want to cover this? Do you want to cover this? I don't have a place to store all of them. Holy cow. It's We're only like three quarters of the way through. And seeing all of this is just insane. This is the, f like I said at the beginning of the video, this is the first time that I've seen all of this in one place together like this. Because when I'm at school, so I let, I'll leave like the OG Squiddy here. I'll leave some things that I don't flip that often here. Seeing it all in one place is just wild, man. Holy cow. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos and subscribing to me. It's just insane that people continue to want to see my opinions on different battle songs and that I'm able to be sent and talk about all of these different battle songs. It's, it's just wild. Next up, let's go into... I like to call this... It's not exactly a fair name, but I like to call this my Misfits case. Battle songs that... I respect enough to keep them in a case and keep them, like, stored properly. But ballast songs that I didn't really particularly enjoy flipping too much. The Akuma Matata, still to this day, rollovers and chaplains feel fine. But as soon as you go to fan it, it just feels off. And even flipping it right now, oh, there we go. You try and fan it too fast and it fights you. And then the, 
carries so much momentum that it just feels a little bit weird to me. And then you get the fact that it's really slippery despite having this, this texture on it. And I think the blade is ugly as sin. It's a well-built Balasong. It feels well-machined. It's balanced well enough that you could flip it if you get one. The problem is, oh, and it's 70-75, which is pretty good for the price that they offer it at, which I believe is 140. Could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. Might be 150. It's just that the balance gets overshined or overshadowed by basically every single other thing because I wouldn't exactly call it a competent flipper because it struggles with some tricks, which I can't really say for most of the other ballast songs in the price range that I've tried. Like, the Arctic isn't the best fanner because it has so much handle bias, but this thing legitimately struggles with fans. And when you combine that with how many issues I had with this thing sticking and binding and then I couldn't untighten the screw, it was just a whole thing. Not my favorite thing in the world. So it kind of just lives in this case as, you know, you know, it just kind of sits there. Now, the hognose is probably my favorite thing in this case, but it's still not my favorite thing in the world. The balance is competent. It doesn't really struggle with anything, although I will say it feels a little bit when you a little bit weird when you start off fans. Not so bad that I would say it's incompetent or struggles with any tricks. But what I will say is that the dimensions of the hognose have become my biggest problem with it. I did a follow-up video after I did a video on the hognose saying that I was like partially wrong about it and I partially liked it, which is true. I think the hognose is a fun flipper, especially now that he's made the adjustments to the to add some pivots down here to add a little bit more weight down there. It's a fun flipper. I just I think my biggest problem is how small it is. It's very thin and small feeling even though it really isn't that small it's almost as big as a prisma is which is a pretty big thing considering you know how big the prisma is but if we compare it to a more standard thing like the kraken trainer then the dwarf kind of comes through it's shorter it's thinner i think the handles are even a little bit thinner they are not by much, but it just, it feels very, very small. And I think it's the reason I haven't been terribly interested in the Gaboon. I would love to try one, but since it's, from what I understand, the same dimensions as the Hognose, I think that would be my biggest thing, because I just don't really enjoy how small the Hognose feels. I think the Hognose is fun, and there are certainly people out there who really, really like it. It flips good. It's got a pretty good build. You know, it's Fellowship 7075. And I even like the blade now that I know it's supposed to look like a snake up here. It's just the fact that it's kind of small and thin makes it not my favorite thing. Although I will say it's the thing that I flip the most out of the things in this case. In fact, it doesn't even live in this case. It normally lives there. I just replaced it with the Orion because the Orion is always, always, always in my EDC bag. And finally, this bad boy, which with the context of the Akuma Matata, I like this thing a lot better now but I still maintain that it doesn't have enough handle weight or conversely, if you already think it's too heavy, which some people might, I know Den Den said that, too much blade weight. Something needs to be done to put the blade and the handles in balance of each other. And I also think that the fact that there's no pivots here is kind of a gimmick. I haven't flipped it enough to really know if it loses tolerances, but the thing is, if it does, there's no way to adjust it. Usually a bushing balisong, which this is running on bushings, is just as simple as, you know, tighten it down if it's properly tuned. So hiding them, what if a screw comes loose under there? Because this is just glued down G10. It's not like there's no pivots. There's pivots there. It's just underneath. Um, in fact, one of the balisongs I didn't dig out for this was one that I have of this thing without the G10 insert, so you can see underneath it. If you want to see that, go back to the original video that I made on this thing. Because that thing, the G10, the G10 adds a bit more weight to the handles. So I find the one without the G10 inserts almost unflippable. But the blade just carries so much weight and the handles really just don't. I can flip it competently, more competently than the Akuma. But it does fight me quite a bit throughout the entire time that I'm flipping it. So not my favorite. And that is that case right there. Next up, let's pull out the Nabali's case. I will say the Hydra normally lives in there where the hog nose is, but as we'll talk about in a second, I actually like the Hydra. 
So the Hydra, false live blade. False live blade's not my favorite thing in the world because you get the worst of both worlds. It's not sharp, so you can't use it like a tool. Can't flip it in public because it looks like a live blade. Um, and it just, you know, it's kind of a weird concept. I know people really like them. I've definitely come around on them since I first talked about the Hydra. But I cannot deny that the Hydra flips amazingly. This, this is one of those Bala songs that gets snubbed because everything else in its price bracket is so good. If the Orion didn't exist, if the Vault Pro didn't exist... I think this would be my favorite thing in the $120 price range, which I'm pretty sure this is. The Japanese Tonto False Live Blade, I believe, retails for $110 or $120. And man, if the Orion didn't exist, or something like... I'm try Or the Marbles, that's the, that's the other huge one. If the Marbles and the Orion didn't exist, I think this would be my favorite thing at or around $100. It flips so good. It's like the Kraken Trainer of the cheap world because, like, it's not as performant as a Kraken Trainer, but it carries momentum, it has enough tip weight, it does everything that you need it to, and it's very consistent. I really, really like how the Hydra feels. And I actually find myself coming back to flip it way more than I thought I was going to when Nepalis first offered me to send me one. I thought this was going to be a case because I had tried Ty's Hydra, he has the Bowie Blade. And it was okay, but it was a pretty standard handle-biased ballast song. You know, felt like a Triton or a Mako or something like that. But this definitely has a little bit more blade weight, a little bit more personality than those. And I just, I really like it. Combine that with the fact that it's grippy. It's got this kind of polished satin finish on it instead of the typical bead blast. And the fact that this texture is very, very nice feeling. I really like the Hydra. I think it's a phenomenal Bala song. It just, you know, is a victim of the fact that there's things that are cheaper than it that I think offer a bit more value. Which doesn't, you know, immediately make it invalid as a flipper. I would pick this thing over the Arctic every single day of the week. But it usually just gets overshadowed. In terms of recommendations, I would more quickly recommend the Marbles or the Orion to someone than something like the Hydra. But flips really well, man. Next up, the Vulp. The Vulp is a ballad song that I, I've gone back and forth on the Vulp, man. If this thing chaplained, I think I would really like it. But unfortunately, the fact is that it really doesn't. The Vulp's biggest thing is that you need big circles to chaplain, and I'm someone who likes to do short, fast, small circles. So I can flip the vault just fine, perfectly competently, fast or slow, up until the point where I need to do a chaplain, in which case I need to really slow down my tempo, or else that's going to happen. And I just, it just annoys me so much. The vault, like, on its own, I think flips fine. I think it fans fine. I think it choker fans even better. I think the grip is okay, even if the speed blast is not my favorite thing in the world. The jimping is great. The design is good. It's just the fact that every time I go to chaplain it, I have to really slow down my tempo and it just messes with my flow. When I'm in a state where I'm just flipping to have fun, I'm listening to music or something, I don't want to have to slow down to be able to do a specific trick. It just, it makes it feel really bad. And that's kind of the reason that I don't enjoy the vault. I still think the vault is great for a beginner because a beginner isn't going to half to slow down their chaplains, they're going to have to speed it up. So it's not really a big issue for beginners, especially since the Vault comes with one of the best unboxing experiences in the business and will give you all the tools that you need to accurately get into the hobby and stay in it. So I always recommend it to someone who doesn't have a Bala song. The problem with me specifically with the Vault is that it doesn't grow with you. Once you get to the point where you're a competent chapliner, you can't improve your chaplains because, you know, improving your chaplains is usually doing slower, or sorry, smaller, faster circles. You can't do that with the vault. you got to go at the vault speed with the chaplains, and I really don't like that. But that all gets fixed with the vault Pro. Now, granted, the vault Pro is almost twice, actually, it is twice the price of the original vault, but I think it is absolutely worth that price. This is worth the 140 all day. And I know that's a hot take. I know there's people that will argue that. 
don't care to hear it because I personally would pay 140 for this all day. It fixes basically every problem I have with the Vulp. It keeps the amazing design. It improves the grip. It improves the balance. It improves the, the finish, this kind of satin finish that the Hydra has. Amazing. The fact that it's so unique with these G10 inlays, which, yes, I know the Cygnus did it first, but name another Balasong that is this cheap, that has this interesting of a, con uh, of, a of a construction. Can you tell I've been recording for about 45 minutes now? Actually, how long has it been? I have no idea. Anyway, it, ju it feels really good. The design is really good. I really like it. I think this would have been a huge contender for basically anything in the Bally Awards, especially mid, maybe not mid-range, um, but Amazon Balasong. I think this would have been a crazy contender if it came out just a few weeks earlier. So maybe next year on the Bally Awards for the Vault Pro, but I really like it. Good grip, really good flipping, consistent flipping. Some of the best jimping I've ever felt, like, honestly and just overall good unboxing experience. I really like it. And Golden Black. This, along with the Kraken Trainer, has turned me into a gold lover. I love gold. I love gold and black. I love gold and silver. I love gold ballast songs. Give me gold and green. Make a good gold and green ballast song. I'm there. Oh my gosh, that would look so good. Anyway, that's the Nabali's case. Nabali's is putting out some really good stuff. Uh, I'm looking forward to maybe spoilery talking about one of their new designs in the future. Ooh. Now we get into the weird world of all of the kind of floating ballast songs. And if you haven't seen something yet, you'll probably see it here. Are you guys ready for what my original Arctic looks like now? I don't think I want to show you, but I'm going to anyway. Here are the scales. Oh, no. So this, these scales were sitting in a box, and I noticed someone on Balasong Sale was selling a spare Arctic blade. And I was like, I'll buy that, and I'll put it on these handles. Because if it's beat up, who cares? So are these scales. These scales have binding issues. First of all, look at how beat these scales are. They're just, they're destroyed. They had binding issues on the original blade. What I didn't realize or what I should have realized, because the person selling it told me that they had been this blade had been modified at some point. But what I didn't think about is the fact that it probably wouldn't fit in Arctic anymore. And I was right, because they modified it, I think, to fit a Kraken trainer or something ridiculous like that. So now there's no handle gap. But honestly, this ballast song makes me understand why Pyro does to his knives what he does to his knives. Because it's probably my favorite flipping arctic that i have maybe it's just the fact that it's worn in and it's the the old scales so they feel very comfortable to my hands but this thing it just doesn't feel like an arctic it feels a little bit more neutral a little bit lighter and just a little bit more springy in its step and even though my ears want to die every time that i'm flipping it and you know i open it and it does that which is awful and i hate it it just it flips so good <laughs> granted i can't flip it for very long because the screws will come loose and the handles will fall off like this thing is a nightmare and maybe it's disrespectful to these old scales but i would like to think that these scales want to be you know used instead of just sitting in a box somewhere where i don't know where they are because i can't put them on anything so I made this monstrosity, and yeah, <laughs> I don't know why it flips as good as it does. I, I can't explain it. It feels better than the other Arctics that I have, flipping-wise. You know, just, just go blind and deaf, and then this thing is a really, really fun flipper. <laughs> but I'll stop torturing you guys with that now. Next up, two ballast songs that I don't want to give a spotlight to, but... Got to talk about the whole collection. My two clones. This one was my third ever Balasong purchase. I bought it to be like, oh my gosh, I'll get like a beater for $20 on Amazon. And it looks like a Nautilus. That's really funny. That's literally what I said. It looks like a Nautilus. That's funny. This is before I understood what a clone even was. So I bought it. And it's terrible. It's, handle it's so handle biased that it can't even fan. It doesn't even... 
roll over correctly like it carries so much momentum that it come it like integer overflows momentum that is the nerdiest thing i've ever said but it's true it goes so far into handle bias that it comes back around and it carries no momentum it carries so much momentum that it doesn't carry momentum because it just fucks you up the whole time i can't flip this thing I, I can't. The tang is bad. The action is bad. It's all bad. It sucks. I hate it. I forgot it existed until I wanted to make this video. And I looked through all my other videos. I looked at my old collection video and I remember I had these two things. Now this one, not really my fault. This is a gift to me by one of my friends. So, you know, it's not like I went out and purchased a clone and I was like, oh, I don't support clones. And I was buying them in the background. This is, I believe, an Archangel clone. And honestly... It's not that bad. It's just super uncomfortable. Like, this thing sucks. So, like, you know, I, I always had the want to get a good balance comb. And honestly, the balance on this thing isn't the worst. Like, it, it flips, even though it's small and handle biased. It's not awful. Like, I can flip it. And it's probably a pretty good comb, because this is like an actual comb instead of the Orion's kind of weird comb. But it's so sharp your hands will feel like they've been abused. If you, I, My hands already feel like they're being abused. It's just every single fucking edge of this thing is sharp, and I hate it, and it, yeah, it doesn't get a lot of use out of me. Again, I don't like, co I don't like clones. I think, again, I think this is an Archangel clone, but it's just not comfortable to flip. Um, and that's the story of the comb that I received as a gift. It's It's actually... It's far better than this. This thing sucks and I hate it. That thing is just really uncomfortable, but it doesn't flip like the worst in the world. And this flips better than both of them combined. I'm sorry, it's just so addicting. Next up, we have this keychain balisong. This thing is pretty cool, but like, I haven't touched it in a while. I'm not going to lie. Oh my gosh. It flips way better than I think it has any re any business flipping, but it doesn't flip good. Like it's balanced fine for what it is, but the fact that it's so small means that you can't really do too much with it. Although granted, I'm doing more with it right now than I thought I would be able to. But you know what? For like a cheap little keychain, you can throw on your backpack and have a cheap little fidget toy that no one is going to think is a knife in any way, shape, or form. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. The original one that I had broke while I was while I was recording the first ever Blade Bias that I did. Uh, or no, sorry. I was doing the week follow-up. I was flipping it. I dropped it. It broke. That sucked. Asked the creator, I was like, you want me to post this? He was like, I prefer you didn't. And I was like, you know what? That's fair. Because he made a bunch of changes since I had gotten that model. So I was like, you know what? You seem to have fixed it. Cool. And yeah, it's nothing too special, but it's a fun little keychain, I guess. And I can flip it better than I really thought I'd be able to, all things considered. Next up is something that a lot of people are going to leave a comment about because they didn't make it this far. Here's my Orion, and it's only in here because I didn't have enough space in my case, and I was having a family party, and I needed to hide all of the live blades. I needed to hide all the balisongs. Granted, at that party, no kids actually came down here, but that's not usually how it goes. A lot of the little ones end up playing in my room quite a bit because it's away from everything because, you know, I'm in the basement. So I had to throw the Orion in a box and hide it somewhere, but the Orion is just nuts for 75 to 85 to maybe 90 dollars this thing's balance is just insane and it's 70 75 aluminum and it's a live blade and it has the craziest aluminum anno i've ever seen it's it's crazy and this brings up an interesting point that i'm going to try not to flip this too much because if i cut myself right now it's going to be really annoying i'm so close to the end um I want to make a video on this in the future, but a lot of people like to compare value to the Orion, which I do as well. Like, it's a valid thing to do. But I think the problem comes with the fact that the Orion is such... It's such an outlier. Like, there aren't ballast songs that you can get this value out of at this price point. 
There are value. There are ballad songs that hit this value at much higher price points. For example, I think like the Sliff T, um, the Stitch Steel stuff, anything custom that you can get hit a very similar value. It's just that they're so much more expensive. This is by far some of the craziest value we've seen for under $100. And it's honestly one of my favorite flippers until like $150. It just, it flips so good. There's so much customization. There's so many options. Definitely one of the best live blades you can get for the price, even up to maybe $200, because there aren't many live blades down here. Razor sharp, built pretty well. Much more comfortable than the original Orion. I think this thing's crazy. This is a solid, solid contender for Ballast Song of the Year. And, I mean, I know what the results are. You guys don't. But this thing, yeah, it just, it goes crazy. And it made a pretty big impact on the beginner price point this year. So I would be, it would be kind of a crime to do this whole video without talking about that thing. Again, there's probably going to be people who are like, where's the Orion 1.5? Because it wasn't in that case. There it is. Next up, the Diode. Another super cheap Balasong that I don't really like that much. It's way too light. It's balanced well, it's designed well, but it's way too light. I think it's like 1.9 ounces or 1.8 ounces or something like that. I don't know. I made a quick draw about it on my main channel. It flips fine if you only have $30 to spend. Like, it's not a bad option at all, but I really do recommend you just save up and get one of Zippy's more expensive products or even something like a Vulp or something like that. Um, but you know what, for what it is, for how light it is, it does flip pretty well. Balance alone is like not bad. I just wish it was heavier. If this thing was heavier, honestly, it'd be a solid recommendation. Zippy, even, I gotta be honest, man, even if you raise this thing, cause it's like a $30 ballast song. Even if you raise this thing by like five or $10, just give it a little bit more weight. It wouldn't be that bad. Cause like the balance alone, not that bad, not the best. But not that bad. Here's another one that people are going to be wondering about. The UFO. Yay. Cheaper than the diode. Why did this video... I'm not even going to talk about the UFO. Because I'm, you're going to get everything that you need to know by me just dropping it the whole time that I'm flipping this. Why did the video about the UFO become the second most viewed thing on Blade Bias? What... What about this thing drew in so many of you guys that you just had to watch that video? I have no idea. I would have really preferred that that video be... I mean, right now the most viewed video is the intro to Ballast Songs video, which I'm super happy about. But, like, why couldn't you guys have gone and watched, like, Brandon's Top 5 or something like that? Or the... A video where I introduce, like, an actual Ballast Song. It had to be the UFO video. I don't know. I'm not complaining. I mean... Gosh, that was a crazy amount of people. Very fun comment section. That's all I'll say on that. But the UFO, like, it flips. I wish it didn't. I wish I didn't have to flip it. I got it for $3. You know, it's it's a fun little fidget toy for 10 bucks, which I think is the normal... I think the normal price is like 18 so... You know, but it just doesn't... It doesn't do a lot. It's very uncomfortable. I want to flip it like it has no blade, but it does have a tiny blade, so it's just kind of annoying. Yeah, I, I don't know. The UFO, not my favorite thing in the world. But I guess interesting for if you're a, into cheap ballast songs. And now finally, this bad boy. This is the Dragonfly, I think that's what it's called. I made a video on this in the past. I never followed up on it, though, because I never found the time to give it the time that it deserves to check out how it flips with the weights. And I'm not sure if I will. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if I give it the uh, the whole, like, I spent a week with treatment. Because, like, it flips pretty good, and it's a pretty interesting, bendable ballast song. Like, the blade bends this way, but it doesn't bend this way. It's really fascinating, actually. Like, I can't bend it this way, but then it twists, and it's supposed to twist. It's a bendy ballast song. It performs okay, but there's just a few issues with it, which I've already shared with the maker, that 
really keep it from being good in my eyes. This tang is way too big. It launches my fingers out whenever I do a trick on that. Messes up my grip. Uh, the blade is a little skinny, and the handles are super, super boxy and big, so fanning doesn't feel very good. Your hands kind of get caught on it a lot. Um, but, like, it's not the worst thing in the world. It flips. It flips better than something like the Matata in my eyes. It's just, it wasn't, you know, something that I didn't want to make another video where I was like, yeah, so here's all the things that I think are wrong with it. I would have rather just, you know, kind of let, because my first impressions weren't super positive on it, but I didn't see the need in coming back and just being like, yeah, so it's just this, 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 because it's fun. It's fun. I'll give it the credit it deserves. It's fun. It's goofy. I like it. Just as far as like an actual competitive flipper or flipper in general, not my favorite thing in the world. So, I think that does it. Holy cow. Let's actually count up how many ballast songs I have. I have I have lost track of this count for a long time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'll do it here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25... Fuck, did I... Oh, shit. This is what happens after you record for way too long. I'm gonna... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. 38?! Oh my god, I could fill one of Will's giant cases that he sells. Oh my god, I could fill the fox truck case. I always told myself if I could fill a fox truck case, then I need to step back. Holy crap. You know what? I'm just gonna... Oh my gosh. I'm gonna give myself an out by saying that a lot of those ballad songs are shitty ones like this one and this one. So it's actually not that many. Wow. Well, now that I've... Tra now that I've... Uh... Oh, I can't even... Now that I've processed that shock, I want to thank you guys because I would not be able to have this big of a collection if it weren't for you guys leaving comments and watching every video and being just generally interested in what I have to say, which is such a weird thing for someone like me to experience. So I want to extend a genuine heartfelt thank you. I'm not someone who's built to be in the spotlight. This is way, this whole blade bias thing has gotten way bigger than I ever expected that it would and that I ever was really planning for. But gosh, being able to bring you guys videos on things that I enjoy so much is just so cool. So I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this far. If you watched this far into this video, I love you. You're awesome. But not too much because I don't want to get too parasocial with it. Thank you so much, genuinely. It means the world that I, I can do this. <laughs> that people want to send me ballad songs to get opinions on, that people care about my opinions, that people will come watch me live stream some stupid game that I'm playing. It genuinely does mean a lot. So I want to thank you all. Hopefully you enjoyed and we'll see where 2024 takes us. Oh my gosh. I'm actually kind of scared to see where my collection is at the end of this year. But yeah. Now's the time where I realize that I missed something. But, you know, that's kind of why we opened everything. Whatever. We're just going to go with it. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I can upload this video and render it in time. And until the next one, I'll see you all later. Peace.